This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Eki Gamble. Yeah, very good day from Germany today. We're recording number 10 of the Monocast. Welcome, Leon, and congratulations. 10 episodes already. What a blast. <laughs> Incredible, eh? Um, we have a lot of stuff on the table today, including a comprehensive interview with my friend Mohammed Abu Musa in Jordan, yeah. who gives us a lot of insights around Mordic from the integration through Zapier and Integromat, <laughs> um, in depth comparison with HubSpot, and uh, his take on Mordic for startups, and so on. Before we go there, uh, what's new in the Mordic world? Of course, with Mordic releases uh, left and right, including the 2.16.2, another bug fix release for the 2 series, and Mordic 3 Beta 2 coming up. Yep. Uh, uh, not much to say about that, just uh, stay tuned. Uh, if you have your plug plugin still not ready for Mordic 2, now is the time. Oh, sorry, sorry for Mordic 3, now is the time, eh? Okay, and, and closely related around the product, there's another topic that is currently going hot because the, the question has been raised, where is D.B. Hurley, the founder of Mordic, uh, rarely to be seen? The last thing we, thought, we saw was uh, a roadmap uh, proposal in the forums um, and a bit of discussion uh, in the context. and. Out of that discussion, it turned out that Mordic, uh, that Mordic, that DB is no longer with Acquia and hasn't been for multiple months already. So uh, it's a bit strange to to learn through through the forums as a side note, but but okay, fair enough, not none of my business. Um, but interesting to know nonetheless. Yep. But. Uh, where is he as a product lead? Is he still on board? And uh, we haven't heard much lately. Um, and so, like it always goes, rumors come up and uh, Josu threw out another blog post that was basically saying Elvis has lo left the building or, or uh, DB has left the building, uh, exclamation mark. And in the com comments, uh, He's, he also says, okay, this is a bunch of assumptions, take it with several grains of salt, etc. That's a good comment, Josu. Nonetheless, it, it is uh, in top, typical Josu style, quite um, forward yeah. pushing. Yeah, we can, we can put it like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and raising a lot of question marks, and I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm with you, Joseph, that um, we need clarity here. We do. Now, the truth is, is different f from, from what you are speculating, though. Um, and I had a little bit of back and forth with, with uh, DB myself. And basically, the situation is that DB is no longer with, with um, Acquia, as I said. By definition, the, the project lead is an Acquia employee. These explicitly said, which this is uh, the founder um, and uh, uh, what is he? C C CTO, CTO, CTO. I think, for, yeah, of Acquia. Um, he, he told us two weeks ago that he still sees um, DB as the product lead and he wants him to be the product lead. But but the definition is unclear. The, the, the the range of power is unclear because, by definition, the, the project lead should be an Acquia pers person, and that's no longer the case now. So the only reason for the current radio silence is that w we are working with Acquia for a new definition. When we, when I say we, is the Mordic community, the Mordic Council, Council, um, to get that relationship defined and. Um, we sure hope to get that out of the way yeah. in the next, in the near future. Maybe next week, maybe not. But but obviously we have a vacuum here. People are unsure, uncertain. We all are, um, and we need clarity here. And um, 
it's gonna work out okay don't worry yeah, it will as always yeah so yeah honestly i mean db has done a hell of a job in creating mordic he is the the face of uh of mordic he's a visionary he's the evangelist and he is also strong in 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 the product development uh process itself so we want him to be proactive uh, he he is around he is available for questions as of today everybody can go to him and get get things uh, from him the only thing he's not he's not proactive at this point so um yeah please be patient and uh, don't don't overspend <laughs> it, guys. yeah yeah uh let's get a little bit down to to tech to uh, to using more last time we had a really nerdy thing with with those calculated values in in forms nerdy but interesting um this t- yeah yeah <laughs> uh, well we had some some interesting feedback on that one but it would, but i think it's valuable um this time we wanted to talk about something um not less important but but a little bit less less nerdy it is about running a mortic instance over a while which requires a bit of housekeeping. Yes. And how do you do housekeeping best? There was a forum thread lately, once again, how to keep your Mordic database trimmed and, and also GDPR compliance to, to get legacy data out of the database. Um, and there is some um, board uh, mechanics in Mordic to to let you do some sort of cleanup. There's a, a console job called Mordic Maintenance Cleanup, and you can say, okay, throw away away everything that's older than a year, um, and it will clean up contacts like that. What we love to do is uh, be much more aggressive about cleaning up, uh, mostly because the database is just stuffed with junk if you have a, a visible website and there are bots all over the place um, then that's gonna kind of blow up your database really quickly and you have a million contacts before you know it yeah. um, so what we do is is have a very basically use regular uh, modic mechanics create a campaign uh, that looks at different uh, circumstances, like uh, this contact hasn't has had more than a single click within a day, uh, go, just delete it. After a day, be gone, not wait a year, but delete it immediately. That can be implemented as a standard campaign. Uh, we'll have a simple little knowledge base article on that and a link to it in the show notes yeah. like we always do um and i'll i'll also add other things to that like uh clean up unused ips which is another uh, con- console job which is valuable and other little pieces of housekeeping that you should do in order to maintain the health of your modic instance exactly um moving on this print um yeah the last episode was right before the modic sprint uh now it is all history our first all virtual sprint leon you you joined it how did you like it oh i was quite excited going into it because i didn't really know what to expect it was my first virtual sprint as well and um yeah, I was quite um, yeah, positively overwhelmed on how much we got actually done and how well it was organized for an online sprint. And um, yeah, I personally contributed in the team education and wrote some knowledge base articles and had some nice conversation with other people from the uh, team education who contributed and got really involved in it and had lots of fun. And, yeah, we had the feedback round afterwards. And just like the one quote I read uh, that says, when is the next sprint? I really, really like that one. 
because it really shows the spirit on how good it was and how excited people are and they want the next one immediately <laughs> and i hope uh well i hope the next one can be non-virtual but i wouldn't mind doing another one virtually yeah that's an excellent point um we, we had we were, basically we were forced to go virtual yeah, we, were. we we planned on an in-person sprint uh, maybe with a little bit of, of virtual involvement like we tried in in uh netherlands last time um and then we, we were forced to go all virtual and we were super surprised how well that went we had uh, way way beyond 60 signups and then an over 50 percent show up rate um so we would never have had that that reach with an in-person event and specifically people around the world who signed up and maybe some, uh, some of them made it uh some of them didn't but but still we have a good sign of appreciation and and uh and, and willingness to to volunteer um so we we must do it again we will do in-person events uh, too but uh there's no way around doing this all virtual as well because second class citizens citizens is is always bad um so that's one learning we need to do all virtual events again um yeah and uh, I love the fact that, that many of those people who signed up were new faces, yeah. quote unquote, at least to me, and um, have not, not been active before in the teams. And then now there are new people in, in the teams. That's, that's new people super contributing, cool. super cool. Yeah, really. and uh, more uh, welcome, of course, um, regardless if you attended the sprint or not. Um, you're very, very welcome to, to get in touch and get closer to the teams. Speaking of TV, that, yeah. uh, <laughs> I wanted to do the we same. Have, <laughs> <laughs> we have a bit of news. Uh, we have a change in, in team leadership in the education team, yeah. where Kevin uh, was kind enough to do an interim uh, leadership. And uh, now has given... Uh, the rain to somebody else yeah and yeah. that special someone congratulations is me yeah i now am yeah. the team lead for team education and i will be taking on the responsibilities and if you listen out there want to contribute in the team education just to just a little advertisement here you're super free to drop me a message on slack and we will get in touch and uh, i'm super excited to get people yeah, to contribute also if you have a if you have wishes or ideas oh, or requirements for Leon, just th throw come it yeah. at him, let it come. <laughs> Critique everything. Yeah. I'm happy to take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. once again, for everybody who is not so familiar what it means, education is, uh, is mostly about documentation. It's not about developer documentation itself, maybe about the, the uh, formalities of it. But it's about user documentation, knowledge base, uh, Forum, FAQs, yeah. forums, yeah, all, all of that. And uh, yeah, like in all the teams, there are so many things to do. So yeah, I appreciate that you take on the responsibility and uh, also do a good amount of work. Uh, but, but definitely we need more people in the team. Yeah, we need. And, uh, and, and also share the responsibility, but also to share the workload. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Good stuff. Um, shall we move to the interview yeah. or do you have anything to add? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, then let's go and welcome Mohammed. Welcome Mohammed. Uh, my guest today is uh, Mohammed Abu Musa. Uh, we've been working in the Morty community recently and I thought it's a good idea to invite you for an interview today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. How are you doing? All well, all well. How about yourself? Oh, I'm pretty good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, there's so many things to talk about. When when we first met online, I was surprised about about your broad 
background, maybe we start with your background, really. I know you have a degree in, in computer engineering. And the one thing I noticed specifically that you actually went to Germany in the past. Tell us about that. That's correct. So my background is a little bit mixed up between uh, computer engineering, doing startups and moving around the world. So uh, during my college days, I got an internship with Daimler Financial Services, which is the financial part of uh, Mercedes-Benz Daimler, where I worked in Berlin for a, a couple of, uh, of months there. And then I worked with several German companies in different fields. Uh, I also started several startups, uh, some of them uh, involved in uh, software development, some of them involved in e-learning, others in user experience testing. And uh, for a large span of my career, I worked with a uh, uh, lead generation agency based in Dubai where we did marketing automation, uh, lead generation automation, sales funnel building, and managing a huge number of clients and a huge number of, of leads. During that period, uh, I had to understand how digital marketing works, how it, uh, how sales funnels are built, how marketing funnels are built, and I had to go through certifications with HubSpot, Salesforce, Bardo to understand what that process about and what value does it bring to the customers. Yeah, I like that a lot to have uh, people who have a lot, ex a lot of experience with other systems know them inside out and maybe even help, help us learn from them, but also understand the, the, the strength that we already have today. Um, so you have a background in software development on one hand and uh, digital marketing, inbound marketing on the other hand, which is cool. Uh, I also noticed that you had, it's in, in, we're talking about like 10 years or so of your career, right? Sure. I, not, I noticed that you did some some things that were more, more focused in businesses, some, some even on social aspects. Uh, so you really have a variety of, of things. Yeah. And um, the one thing um, that got you closer to Mordic was a, a previ previous uh, thing where, where you partnered with, with Integramart. And that was really the, the first integration that you did with Mordic was the Integrum mod, uh, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. So uh, there's a plugin for Zapier, and I use Integromat a lot. Like uh, when I compare Zapier to Integromat, Integromat has some, some advantages that mm -hmm. I would love to bring to my customers. And I thought like this is an opportunity, and a lot of customers want to use uh, Mordic and connect it with other with other systems. So I built the first integration with uh, Motic and Integromat where you can have the standard events of Motic like creating leads and updating leads and push them into Integromat so you can push them into another system. And that no, one- Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> let, let's back up a little bit for those who don't even know Zapier. Um, mm -hmm. The integration to other systems, can, can you give us an example or, or two of what the purpose of that is? And then talk about Uh, the platforms who do that, like like Zapier or Integrum. Definitely. So one uh, one common business case is when we have clients who run campaigns on Facebook or LinkedIn. So when you run digital marketing campaigns there, you have an option to do one specific type, which is called lead campaign, where you have a form inside Facebook or LinkedIn, and people fill in that form, and the information filled needs to be funneled in into your CRM or marketing automation system. And in order to do that, you need to do some programming uh, against that platform. So you have to program against Facebook leads system. And that would involve a lot of technology and understanding of programming. So what connectors like Zapier and Integromat would do, they would connect with Facebook. They would take the burden out of you. They would connect to Facebook. They would collect the leads that you are collecting from Facebook and basically give you the information so you can load them into any system that you like. So that where the idea originated and came from because the repeated need for connecting Facebook leads and AdWord, uh, and uh, LinkedIn leads into Motic. So, so we said we have to integrate using either Zapier or Integromat and this is where these systems come into action. 
so the need was like we need to use Integromat because it, it provides um, a cheaper alternative because Zapier changed their business model and now they are charging a lot in my view. So we thought Integromat is a good solution for low volume uh, clients like those who have like 10 leads a day or uh, five leads a day. We don't need to buy premium Zapier account. We can just uh, use Integromat, which offers a free alternative and you can connect with it to any, any system. So the standard process would be uh, a lead would enter from Facebook, like they would fill a form on Facebook. The information would be added to Motic and from within Motic we do a campaign in which we notify the lead owner that there's a new lead or we send a welcome email or an offer depending on what the campaign is. Okay, so Integromat is, is really the same idea that, that Zapier is, certainly some some d details are different, the price model is different, but there's a ton of integrations, uh, not only social media, but also say CRMs or event platforms and financial platforms, etc., that you can all integ integrate into each other. And, and you built the integration into Mautic. That's so we can, you can now connect everything into Mautic and vice versa. Exactly. Uh, how, how did how did that go? The integration with Mordic was it straightforward? Is it, is it was it tricky? What, was there a lot of missing APIs with Mordic? Uh, what was your experience? I, I think it was relatively easy because the APIs endpoints are all there. Uh, there is also an advantage that we have an, an existing plugin developed. So Zapier plugin is out there. It's open source. You can read the code. Uh, so like if you have um, an intermediate level of programming background, you can do it within a day or two. So it was relatively easy. The ABI was there. Uh, the only challenge that was there from a programming point of view is uh, there are a little bit of difference of what the documentation has to say on what the, what the actual system would provide. Because, uh, like, for example, you have a, in, in the ABI output, you would have two variables, one that says a lead output and a contact output, and that comes from the difference in versions. Um, and that was not mentioned in the documentation. But overall, like, if you have a basic understanding of programming and you have a good logic uh, of understanding ABIs, you can implement it easily. Cool. Very good. And um, how would I install? Well, this in Mordic, is it a Mordic plugin or is it an integrament plugin or? or... Mordic side, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. It's just you go to Integromat, uh, you connect it to Mordic. Of course, in Mordic, you have to do a little bit of configuration. You need to mm -hmm. uh, create an OAuth2 uh, application mm -hmm. so you can yeah. connect to it and you have to enable ABI access. Okay, so the, the module is... I mean, you you are a partner with Integromat. They now have the Mordic plugin installed for everybody. Basically, I don't need to install anything. Just you don't have to install anything. Just have a, an Integromat account, and you can connect to your Mordic account, and that's it. Okay, very cool. Um, is there any enhancements and that that we could do on the Mordic side to make the integration even more powerful? Um, I think we can do uh, more uh, more events, more triggers. Like when points changes, we can trigger an event. When a state changes, we can trigger an event. We can do scheduling of reports uh, and sending like we can send the CSV to Integromat, which is not available at the moment. It, like an example, uh, a report is generated as CSV every every single day, and that would it trigger a webhook and send the CSV file to Integromat, which is parsed and sent to different stakeholders in, in uh, the marketing campaign. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, very cool. Um, let's let's step back a little bit further and uh, talk about what you are doing today in general. What's, what's your business today? What are you doing with Mordic today? I'm I'm doing a lot with Mortic these days. So we are uh, we are building a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster to host uh, the Mortic operations. So we are preparing a hosting service for Mortic three that will be based on um, a Kubernetes cluster. For those who don't know what Kubernetes is, is basically 
um, a system to run all the servers, orchestrate them, make, make sure that the servers are running all the time. It automates all the operations that we do, like backups, like security maintenance, uh, like upgrading the system, email, uh, funneling and sending. All of these operations will be encapsulated in um, a one place. So you don't have to worry about hosting or running the system. You just focus on uh, running Botic itself and making sure that your campaigns are converting. And we will take uh, care of the tech side. The product is called uh, Steer Campaign. It's still in development. Uh, but we, will ha we have some beta clients who are testing the system. Okay, that's a st steer, steer Campaign as in, in Steering Wheel? Yes, a Steering Wheel. So okay. Steer Campaign. Okay. Steer campaign yeah, I put as the, the URL. I put the URL in the show notes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the uh, the idea came from uh, the large number of clients that we worked with, and we found it uh, it was a hassle and uh, sometimes a commitment from our side and the client side to do that kind of maintenance upgrades, uh, security checks, making sure that everything works. So we thought we can consolidate all these operations into a single space, and the clients can focus on building their campaigns while we focus on making things run, contributing back to the community, understanding the bugs, and sometimes fix them. Yeah, very good. So you do, do you have existing clients, large and small, uh, that are running traditional hosted environments and you're now building an, a SaaS environment uh, from that experience? Sort of yes, care. yes, exactly. We have a lot of clients who are using self-hosted systems and it uh, they are hosted like on different environments, some of them on DigitalOcean, some of them on AWS, uh, Google Cloud. So it, it varies. It, it's hosted on um, every single different cloud hosting system. And that made a little bit of a hassle for, for us and them to make sure that these servers are running well and without problems. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you do have a lot of startups within your clients too, and I, I understand that, that you're considering that a special focus. Uh, what, why do you think it's that Mordic is so valuable to startups? What's it, what are the benefits specifically for them? Um, so for, for startups, I think if we look back at the landscape, like the competitive landscape, where Mordic stands against the competitors so if you analyze if you took a small look at the landscape you would see we have hubspot an active campaign leading the dashboard you have also mailchimp and clavio bardot they are all competing against motic and most of these companies are offering amazing products but with a high high cost uh, sometimes uh, these costs can come up to three, um, 300,000 or 400,000. So that's around half a million. And that's a big number for your company, whether it's small or large, if you are an agency or a multi-million contact company. So Motic provides a good option for startups because it's uh, relatively uh, small. You have relatively small running costs. And it helps you understand your funnels, and it's very easy to implement once you like learn it a little bit. Okay, um, I sit down with a lot of my clients, my startup clients, and we always they always come with we need to use HubSpot. So I always ask them why it's a need, what's the idea, and then we start talking about how do they design their marketing and sales funnels. So I made up like a conclusion of. What what are the reasons that drive startups and sometimes agencies and, and big companies to use HubSpot? So um, you would find like many startup starts without understanding their needs. So they go to HubSpot because it offers a wide range of features and they offer, um, I would call it a trap, like a very generous discount for the first year. You would have to pay like $25 a month for the first year. But after the first year is done, you are paying something around $3,000 or $2,000 and they start charging you the receipt. So yeah. instead of like, if you are a super startup, okay, you can pay for it. But if you are a regular startup or a regular agency, these prices are not really good for scale. So the first thing, yeah. the first problem that many companies, I wouldn't say just startups, are suffering from is that they do not understand their needs. The first thing is that Startups and many companies look into technical features before they design their funnels. Like 
uh, they do uh, like some some questions would come. Do they do IP reverse lookup? Like if a lead came in and we only know the IP, we would know which company they came from. And the 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 regular question would be what that would benefit you. Why is this feature important for you? Do you have a funnel in place? Do you know what to do with your leads? Do you know which lead is a good lead? Which which lead is a bad lead? Which lead is ready to, to buy? Which one is not? And when we start asking these questions, we identify that many features that most of the big systems are offering is not really relevant. Okay, especially in the earliest stages of startups. Yeah. Um, I also realized that many companies do not realize the difference between marketing automation and a CRM. They don't know the difference between marketing activities and marketing automation and a CRM operation. This is why they sometimes buy product that combines both and they end up using 10% of all the features provided, although they only needed a marketing automation system or only needed a CRM system especially for low volume companies like they don't have a lot of leads okay um, one thing that a lot of agencies ask about is whether modic has a white labeling feature or not can they do a centralized management of their instances or not how can they do that and that is something that comes a lot like very often and luckily there's a plugin to do that and you can install it on Motic and you can change the logos, the colors of Motic while maintaining uh, the the licensing model of Motic and not violating that. Mm-hmm. Um, also for pricing, and this is the thing that uh, many companies often neglect, um, you, you would buy, for example, one user a license, but if you need two or three users, you would end up paying a lot. Or if you have a small number of leads, say a thousand leads or two thousand leads, but when you scale that up, you end up buying a huge number uh, of of uh, money for that that type of pricing. So these are the the notes that you should consider when you are evaluating Motic against other competitors, or when you're evaluating to select which CRM or marketing automation system that you need to buy. Yeah, I would like to to have an uh, or um, an opinion from your side though on the topic of CRM because in my experience too, CRM is frequently mixed up and we we do run across many customers who do not have a proper CRM CRM in place uh, and hope that uh, that Mautic would would be that and of course on the other hand you have HubSpot HubSpot which is also a CRM if you choose so. Um, and I understand that you say for many, uh, CRM is not a priority, but but at a certain point, I do believe people do need a CRM. Do you have any favorite, uh, solution that you combine HubSpot, uh, Mordic with? Uh, I know a lot of, a lot of agencies who even use HubSpot as a CRM, uh, and Mordic as a really budget solution for the marketing automation to avoid all this this hassle with with HubSpot and the cost. Okay, um, I, I th- a, a small comment here. I think HubSpot mm, did a brilliant job in branding their products into a single product. So the CRM is a different product than the marketing automation one, but they try to sell you both products as one and you end up paying a lot for that type of functionality. Yeah. Um, the the cost center, like the, the, the number of money that you pay a lot for is the marketing automation part. So if you take only the sales part, you are paying way less in HubSpot. So HubSpot can act as a CRM, although I don't prefer it. Um, one thing, if you are an agency or if you are adopting Motic, the first thing that you need to separate is what is sales and what is marketing. Motic is only a marketing automation system and it shouldn't act as a CRM because a CRM would involve uh, like uh, areas of following up with customers who are ready to buy, customers who you should probably get in touch personally with. You need to do some type of presentations at some point. You need to do some kind of events uh, like a contract, NDAs, uh, in connecting with invoicing and connecting with financial systems. And Motic does not offer that type of functionality. Even if you try to make customization to it, it's not there. Yeah. 
Yeah. My suggestion is to use a pipe drive. I, I use pipe drive a lot with a lot of customers. Uh, the courses are relatively good, especially if you have a small team of uh, sales reps, like around five or four. Mm-hmm. It's well connected with, with Motic, so you can uh, make your leads hot in Motic. You can understand their needs. You can uh, know in which stage they are, and then you can push the leads out from Motic into Pipe Drive, where they become hot leads ready for your salespeople to step in and uh, sell them the products and close the deals with them. And we have implemented this type of philosophy with a big number of clients, ranging from small clients who have uh, thousands of leads in, and clients who have several thousands of leads, including one b- b- big pharmaceutical company in the U.S. who used to pay a lot for uh, Bardot. And we stopped using Bardot and we moved the marketing automation part into Motic and the sales part kept with Salesforce because they have already Salesforce. So we connected this to that and they... Uh, reduced the amount of investment they have to do with Salesforce uh, around uh, like uh, around uh, b- b- $200,000. Yeah, I agree that, that whatever you use as a CRM, uh, a proper integration is absolutely key, uh, both uh, the regular sync and, and the, the event-driven push to integration event. Sure. Um, and yeah, there are, there are a lot of existing integrations from Pipedrive to Salesforce or even HubSpot CRM uh, or others like SAP or, or you, you name it, VTiger. Um, so if, if you are currently using a, so you, the listener, are currently a, using a CRM and there's no good integration for it, uh, just a little hint, it is not a big deal any Modic developer can can create a good integration based on the given framework and uh, do all the magic that Muhammad just described. It's, it's super important. Yeah. Okay. Um, when we did the Modic sprint earlier this month, um, that was the first all virtual sprint ever. Uh, not only in the Mordic world, but but also for for all of us, it was the first sp- event of that type. If you j- had just one sentence, what, what's your overall reflection on that event? It was great. I liked it. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's enough. To, I don't want to hear more. <laughs> okay, to cool. elaborate, uh, um, to elaborate a little bit on this, um, it 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 gave us the chance to connect with the core developers, to connect with the community. To make the connections like this type of connection because of the sprint now we are talking and now we are spreading the experience and that would be really really hard to do over emails or over 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 forums so when you collect people when you connect people in the same place same time same ideas you will build amazing stuff mm, okay i've i've uh, failed to mention that you are uh, located in, in jordan uh, in the middle east you, sure. you have been in in the in San Francisco in the Bay Area for a while, but, but you're now in the Middle East. And um, given that, the the original plan was to have this print as an in-person event in Belgium with a little bit of a virtual part, but basically an in-person event. Um, now that we had this all virtual thing, um, and that you already know some people what would it take for you to consider attending another in-person ev- event when one day we are ready to do that again would it have to, would you do that in the first place and and is there like like a maximum distance for that or what what is the criteria for like because i'm not from the eu and i don't hold an american passport visas are always the problem for us and i think a lot of countries would share that with me, like uh, getting a visa, you need to apply three weeks in advance, get an invitation letter, have your papers done. And that's a hectic process. So mm-hmm. um, I, I think virtual virtual meetings are good because they put you, uh, I don't know what, what is it about, like virtual meetings, you are in a state of mind where people just talk business and they don't do anything social. So you get things done or at the opposite, you don't get anything done. So... In the sprints, our case was like we got a lot of things done. Uh, in person, it gives you uh, like the human element of it. 
but due to legal now COVID-19 issues like that, I think in person would be hard to attend um, because of regulation stuff and because like transportation and getting accommodated and you need to take some time off your work and you have to align your, your calendar. So I think virtual virtual meetings are way better in my opinion. Mm. Okay. The other thing, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know, we, we will really want to talk about it already, but the, the one thing that we noticed in the course of the sprint, even more than we did before, is the importance of local communities. Uh, we have so many, we had so many people from around the world, from Asia and, and South America and, and, and Africa and everywhere. Um, and you really can't expect people to A, travel long distance, but also B, um, be familiar with, with English or feel comfortable with English. So for you in the Middle East, it's not a problem, but for, let's say, the Japanese, it, it is a, a barrier for some. So uh, one topic of the sprint was to create a solution to, to empower the local communities to, to get together and to be part of the Mordic family. But, but that's for later. Um, one thing I remember from, from you uh, contributing to the marketing team was the push for more case studies. And I think you offered to create one yourself. Uh, can you talk about that already? Can you give us a sneak, sneak, sneak peek maybe? Definitely. Uh, so the case study is ready. Now it's in review. Um, and probably we'll publish it next week uh, after we uh, run it with the marketing team and make sure it matches the standards. So this uh, case study is a client of ours based in uh, the in San Francisco. And amazingly, this company is a chemical company. They are a chemical marketplace and they uh, sell, uh, sell chemical products for their clients and they looked for a solution that scales with them. So they started, we, we talked in the beginning uh, or that they need a marketing automation system that would help them uh, send emails without them, them paying a lot of money. And we scaled from one Motic installation to now around 50 Motic installations, managing leads around uh, 400,000 emails. And and these guys were amazed by the capabilities that Motic provide. They like the way it manages uh, the uh, campaigns, the way it follow ups, the way it makes some reports. And this type of, of case studies would allow other companies in other industries like real estate, like financials, even startups can understand the value that Motic brings to them. And in this specific case study, we highlighted the usage of Motic within the processes, how it lowered the cost of ownership and how it helped us uh, increase the uh, marketing activities for our clients without them being involved mm -hmm and uh, like buying systems or sharing accesses or doing any technical stuff uh, as, as a client. Cool. Yeah, I can't wait to see it and, and read it online. Sure. Uh, thank you so much for sharing sure. that. Definitely. Um, before I let you go, um, there's a general question I'd like to ask you. Um, when, when you talk to others who get started with, with Valuable, what information did you for yourself find most most valuable? What what are you recommending others today, be it users or be it agencies? What are the resources? Okay, for the resources, the documentation is really good. I liked it. The videos, there are several videos on YouTube that uh, help you understand the concepts. Uh, the documentation are self-explanatory. You don't have to be uh, like a super wiz or a, uh, a developer to understand them. So you can start with the documentation. You can uh, watch the videos and see how it works. There are several blog articles that discusses how to use it. And I think these information are valuable for you if you are getting started. Uh, mm -hmm. And I also uh, encourage a lot of people to install Motic on their machines using, for example, Vagrant or Visual Box. So you uh, you can test it locally. You can see how it works. Um, there are small hacks that you can do. For example, uh, you can use a system called MailTrap.io. Uh, 
and oh, yeah, important. yeah and you just send emails out and these emails will go to MailTrap and you can see how your stuff works you can see how the campaigns work how the scheduling work why Motic is important and when you go through the documentation you would see that you are making a lot of progress and when you start playing with the campaign builder and that is the most important part when you start playing with the campaign builder you will discover how uh, good Motic is in managing and uh, getting under uh, like getting your email campaigns or marketing campaigns done correctly. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Very last question: Where can find people uh, you online? You can find me on the Slack channel, Motic Slack channel. I'm there. You can find yep. me on LinkedIn, and you can find me on GitHub. All you okay. have to search for is Muhammad Abu Musa. Okay, I, I'll put it in the show notes too. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Fascinating stuff. Uh, and I look forward to working a lot with you in the Definitely. future. Same Thanks, you, Muhammad. same Take you. Care. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Yeah, super exciting interview. And who would have thought about the visa issues? I personally wouldn't have thought that some people couldn't even like attend in person because of things as visa issues. And it just shows how versatile uh, online meetup could be and yeah. which problems are solved by that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame that, that uh, I have to admit, we don't think of uh, the problems that non-EU citizens would have to get into the EU and um, be so selfish to... to we well, have not consider that. I mean, once we think about it, it's, it's so obviously natural. Clear, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah. Thanks, Mohammed. Um, let's go to other events. Uh, and there's one thing coming up that we talked about frequently. Yeah. We made another step forward, and that's the Morticon yeah. coming up. Um, big part of this print. Um, and Part of it is that we decided to have a working group uh, to organize the Morticon and to finally nail the date for the Morticon. And uh, we figured we wouldn't do that ourselves, but hand it to the community. So we have two proposed dates. Yep. Both are a Tuesday, both are in November 2020. Uh, so we're talking about 3rd of November and 17th of November. And those are the options. And uh, we have a little poll that I link to in the show notes, like we always <laughs> do. Um, and ask everybody to to raise their voice, which is their preferred uh, date for the all virtual Morticon. Once again, um, we're doing a single day uh, this year we are doing it all virtual um, what to expect is not yet published but obviously there will be a keynote there will be major talks there will be sure. uh, breakout sessions all sort of things um, so it will hopefully be something in it for everybody but we're not asking you to book anything today. We're just asking you for your opinion. If it is for you, which is the best date for you? November 3rd, November 17th. Or you don't mind, that's a fair, fair answer too and we appreciate your feedback. Good. Um, we also appreciate your feedback on this show. <laughs> as uh, always. <laughs> yeah, as always. Uh, as in... Uh, ratings and reviews but also uh, in the social media please spread the word and and comment and and give us questions and give questions to to leon specifically yeah, happy to take them all <laughs> yeah okay thank you so much for today stay safe everybody and talk to you soon bye 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 bye